Does taking out your buckle fat pad cause your face to sag? And whose word do I have to take to believe it one way or the other? Is it the community at large? Is it my plastic surgeon? Also, how do I know what the long-term changes of facial liposuction are? How is that gonna impact the rest of my facial skin, my jowls, all these things? These are all great questions. And these are questions that the plastic surgeons also have. So you're not alone in wondering about long-term effects of facial sculpting or buccal fat pattern removal, but I have one unique tool in my practice that helps me not only gauge and communicate with patients as far as achieving their expectations, but also in terms of studying the long-term effects of facial sculpting. Do you wanna learn more? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board-certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California. You've seen a lot of my videos before and there's a big, strong similarity between a lot of them. I do a lot of facial sculpting, I do a lot of facial surgery, including buccal fat pad removal, liposuction of the lower face and the jowls, as well as skin tightening. When a facelift is out of the question and you're a good candidate for less invasive options, really nothing that I offer confers the same degree of consistent patient satisfaction of some degree of facial liposculpture and skin tightening and possibly buccal fat pad removal, implants and things like that. Something to shape the lower half of your face. So why am I so excited about this video and what makes this video different than the other videos? Well, honestly, this video is chronicling one of the first patients that we tracked with a, a computer system and a software suite called Vectra, or Vectra H2 specifically, and this is manufactured by Canfield Scientific in New Jersey. What this does is allows us not only to take a uh, three-dimensional uh, video and photo of our patients, but it also allows us to track them over time and it can study the results not only volumetrically, but also in terms of vectors of motion. And this vectors of motion concept is incredibly important. So yes, I can take out 100 cc's of fat and I can see in a post-operative photo that when I study the change, it's down 95 to 100 cc's. It's very impressively consistent with what I'm taking out in the OR and documenting. But on top of that, we can also see three-dimensional change. And this three-dimensional change, or vector, shows us not only the direction of pull from before to after, but the magnitude. So when I take out buccal fat pads, as I've shown you in a previous video, you can see that there's a slight upward vector pull of the jowl. It's actually causing a concavity in the mid-face, which will pull things inward because you're creating greater surface area in the mid-face, and that has a tendency to pull things in, not drop them down. But also, if you do a lot of liposuction in the lower face, especially here and here, creating a concavity in these attractive areas will also have a net effect of pulling things in and up. So this is a great case that shows not only the surgical approach to a patient, but it's a great case study as far as early outcomes. This patient's only about three months out of her surgery, but you can already see that the volumetric changes are very consistent with what I took out in the OR, and the directions or vectors of pull are very favorable cosmetically. I hope this helps. So I take photos of my patients the same way each time, and this camera gives me the opportunity to have sort of flawless three-dimensional films that I can simulate these results on. I can actually plan my surgery, I can look for certain degrees of change, and I can get an idea of what this is gonna to do to the patient face. This allows me to really map out a plan that is consistent with my markings, with my vision, and with the patient desires. So all of these things really do come together. Here you can see that the upper and lower jowls are really the problem areas. It's not the corner of the jaw angle, it's nothing else. So my plan is to take down the upper jowls, the lower jowls, and to really sculpt the neck, especially under the jawline. Doing this and this alone is gonna give the patient the look that she desires. This before and after is not only impressive in and of itself, but it's teaching us something. And as I continue to gather data in three dimensions of all the patients I treat, we'll have a much better understanding of the long-term benefits of doing facial liposculpture, which goes a lot further than just taking away a double chin. Thanks so much, and be sure to subscribe.